like to welcome our next guest, Jeff Jacoby. He is a professor of audio and radio at SF State, and he's had radio shows aired on PBS and NPR. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Audrey. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks. I, it's kind of funny because Jeff's also my neighbor, so. <laughs> and we drove here together. So and we drove here together strange, too, but right? Right. right? But um, Jeff, tell us a little bit. You are a sound artist. You've got a, a traveling radio show. Mm -hmm. You there's so many things you do. Actually, I have an idea. Let's listen to some of the traveling radio okay. show. Would that be okay? Listening's good. Listening is good. <laughs> That's right, it's the Traveling Radio Show goes to San Francisco. I'm your host, Jeff Jacoby, with Tommy Hollywood, student guest Jennifer Solis, and the musical stylings of San Francisco's own Gaucho. In part one of this episode, we'll meet Laughing Sal, get weird on Howard Street, go to the gayest party in San Francisco, and more. So stay tuned. Tell us where to go. Yeah, this is good to Taylor. Where's that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know where we all are on these things, Jen. But we know we're in San Francisco. Yeah, I hear those cable cars. Hey, Jen, do you have a map? No, I almost bought one. <laughs> All right, so we didn't get off to an efficient start, but hey, it's easy to get lost in San Francisco with all these hills everywhere and no left turns anywhere. We're working our way over to Telegraph Hill to check out Coit Tower, built in 1933 by Lillian Coit Hitchcock as a monument to the city's firefighters, to whom she reportedly showed all sorts of intimate appreciation. So Jeff, uh, tell me a little bit about your radio show. My radio life. Um, I decided years ago, I found that I love traveling around the world. And I did a lot of traveling with my wife, Sharon, whom you know very well. And I also loved radio for many years. I've been doing radio since high school, so since 1973. I, finally, I finally found a way to combine the two, a uh, traveling radio show. So I'm traveling and I'm doing radio while I'm traveling. So my associate, in this case two associates, uh, we all bring tape recorders, digital recorders now, which are very small, so it's very easy to carry. And we go to places like San Francisco, Portland, Oregon, New Orleans, New York City, Boston. We've done a number of them. So I think this is the 11th episode. And we record what happens to us. So what happens to us happens to you. It's a very you are there radio program, which is old fashioned. It's almost from the 40s and 50s, uh, if you listen closely. And you, you have a lot of other sound that you yes. do. Yes, well, the, the, mu the music for all of our shows is sourced locally, as they like to say here in the Bay Area. Um, the band you're listening to is actually another neighbor and a very well-known uh, band in San Francisco called Gaucho. They play all over. Uh, and these sounds, of course, are what it's about. I am a sound person, and all of my work revolves around sonics. Uh, whether it's the sound of the world or sounds that I've invented. And so this is just another venue for me to gather sound, play it back for people in one form or another. And some of the other sound design you do for mm -hmm. films, because I know you've worked on three of my films. <laughs> That's right. And we have a little clip from an award-winning uh, okay. animation. Okay. So um, if we could play... Do you want me to set line? that up? Want me to set it up? Sure. So Offline is done uh, by a, another friend of mine. I actually went to grad school with him. His name is Tom Gasick. And Tom was one of the lead animators on Coraline. Have you oh, seen yeah, Coraline? I love Coraline. He's a very talented guy. And he does stop action animation, which requires you to be insane. Uh, dancers are pretty insane, but stop, a stop action animators are out of their minds. I think most viewers know what that means. It means that every time you see something move, the animator went in and moved an arm a fraction, and they took a shot. Then the animator came in, moved the arm another fraction, take a shot. And that's how you make the characters move. So when you see them walking through space or whatever they're doing, it takes hours, days, weeks, months to do just one show. So, so, so let's take a look take at a look. that. Yeah. And can we roll that clip, please? <laughs> Hey. 
uh, Jeff, can you tell us about... Of course. What most viewers won't understand is animated films have no sound. When I get that footage, when I see that footage for the first time, it is silent. So all of the audio you're hearing, whether it's squeaks or electricity or music, whatever it might be, or dialogue in most films, that's added in by the sound designer. And so I think of sound design as a broad field. Most people think of sound design in the industry as being for film. But I sound design my radio shows. I sound design visuals like this and also live action uh, films. Um, but it's really out of my imagination, of course, in conjunction with the director. And also, you are a sound artist. Sure, yes. Can you talk about what that means? Yeah, it sounds very pretentious, doesn't it? <laughs> sound artist. Uh, it's not my term. Uh, it's a very old term. It's been around a long time. I mentioned earlier that most of my work revolves around sonics in some way. And th this is sound to picture. Uh, the previous one was sound for the radio. But sound exists by itself. And the world that we live in is filled with sound. Most people don't even realize that. They're not paying attention to it. Uh, there's a term called king visual. Uh, we are very focused and very attuned on our visual sense. Our visual acuity tells us what's going on. To see it is to believe it. You've heard that before. Uh, so I urge people to engage with the sonic space that they're living in and walking through, even when they're sleeping. We close our eyes. We don't close our ears. And my artwork revolves around natural sounds, sounds of the world, my interpretation of that as an artist, and then playing it back for you so that the next time you're in the world, you'll notice something, a, a construction sound, a car drive by, a dog barking, the wind in the leaves. Uh, just the sound of the space that you are in will suddenly impact you, and you'll begin to broaden what your experience of the world is. It can be profound. And you've got so a piece that you're working on now? I'm always working on pieces. I just am um, delighted to have received a grant to do some new compositions that I'll be performing with some students uh, in the Mission in District in San Francisco in three or four months from now. Uh, but I'm always working on things. I think you've got a piece for me also that was done some years ago that was about the 911 event, meaning September 11th, 2001 in New York City. I was directing a radio show with college students at the time, having nothing to do with this, of course. And we had given out mini disc recorders, which was the recorder of choice at the time, to college students around the country. One of those students was at NYU. Well, those of you who are not from New York won't know that NYU is two blocks from the World Trade Center, or the former World Trade Center. And when the first plane hit, they evacuated those students. And this young woman had the presence of mind to take her mini disc recorder and turn it on and be evacuated while she was recording. And she sent us some amazing things. Well, two years later, I went to art school in order to get an advanced degree so I could be a professor. And that's what led me to come to San Francisco. And I found that material sort of accidentally buried on my computer. And I thought, this is something I have to work with. And I created a sound art piece called 911. Wow. Well, 
I want to, we'll play that. Okay. And also I want to talk about the future of radio. Okay. In Skipping back. 30 seconds. Okay. The future of radio is bright. <laughs> it's all good. Audio is strong. If you walk down the street, what are the young people doing? They're wearing headphones. They're listening to sound, and they're doing it for two reasons. One, because humans love sonic stimuli. We all love it, mostly in the form of music, but as you become more aware in other forms as well. And they're also trying to blot out the world a little bit because it's a noisy place, and they don't know how to engage with it. Radio, as long as it understands how much we love to be stimulated by sound, will be fine. What's changing is it's going from what's known as terrestrial radio, antenna, transmitter radio, to the Internet. So radio's fine, it's just the venue is changing. And so when I teach it, and the way I think it ought to be taught, should be about content and how to do good radio, regardless of where it's displayed. And thank you so much, Pleasure. Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> wait, wait a minute.